for networks that carry sensitive traffic need to restore services traffic quickly less than one second OSPF hello mechanism is not enough for that and same for PGP the solution to quickly detect failures between devices that are not physically connected to each other is BFD If we have two routers reside in separate geographical locations and they need to communicate to each other there should be some transmission devices in between them to make them connected to each other we have two available transmission paths between them for more redundancy if there is OSPF routing protocol running between R1 and R2 and the OSPF routing protocol selected the best path between R1 and R2 to be via TX1 and TX2 traffic will start to flow via this transmission path if there is a local failure occurred between R1 and TX1 R2 is not able to immediately detect that there is a failure between R1 and TX1 OSPF can detect that there is a failure by using the hello mechanism OSPF periodically exchange hello packets between peers usually within 10 seconds if there is a failure at R1 side the hello packets cannot be sent R2 will not be able to receive these hello packets R2 has to wait until the dead interval to expire so that R2 can announce that R1 is no longer appear via the transmission path TX1, TX2 so it can restore the traffic between R1 and R2 via the other transmission path TX3 and TX4 for networks that carry sensitive traffic need to restore services traffic quickly less than one second OSPF hello mechanism is not enough for that and same for PGP the solution to quickly detect failures between devices that are not physically connected to each other is BFD BFD stands for bidirectional forwarding detection it's a simple hello protocol BFD session is established between two systems the two systems can be any network devices that can support BFD these network devices can be routers switches firewalls or any network devices BFD hello packets are periodically sent between them over the established channel if the network device doesn't receive BFD hello packets from the other end within a specified time this specified time at milliseconds level the network device declares that a fault occurs over that channel with the other end so the key point here is that we have a millisecond level detection time above detection mechanism is important between network devices because of the following hardware signals cannot be used to detect faults between devices that are not directly connected to each other just like what we had in the example the connectivity between R1 and R2 was not physically directly connected there are some transmission devices network protocols running between network devices such as OSPF and BGP use hello mechanism with false detection more than one second the key point here is that BFD is standard media independent and protocol independent media independent means that it can work on 
any media type and protocol independent is that it doesn't depend on any protocol like OSPF or PGP or other routing protocols it can run independently and it can be bound to the network protocols to notify the network protocols that there are faults on the path to establish a BFD session between R1 and R2 each device or each one of them must have a value to distinguish the BFD session this value is called discriminator each device own a discriminator value is called local discriminator at R1 the discriminator value of R2 at R1 is called remote discriminator and same for R2 R2 has a local discriminator value and the discriminator value of R1 with respect to R2 is remote discriminator the BFD session configuration done statically or dynamically to configure a BFD session we need a name BFD session name and the BFD discriminator values the BFD discriminator values can be added or configured statically and can be allocated dynamically if allocated dynamically it has to be exchanged between R1 and R2 BFD sessions with discriminators can be statically or dynamically configured between network devices to configure a static BFD the BFD is added manually on each device and we add both required values local discriminators and remote discriminators at each device at R1 the remote discriminator value must be the local discriminator value at R2 and at R2 the remote discriminator value must be the local discriminator value at R1 if there is mismatch between these values the static BFD session cannot be established the request from each router is initiated by the static configuration for the dynamic BFD the local discriminator value is allocated locally on each device and at the beginning the remote discriminator value at each device equals zero it's unknown the BFD packets between R1 and R2 exchanged R1 and R2 can see the local discriminator value of each other so that remote discriminator values can be learned so if we have a local discriminator value at R1 as 10 and local discriminator value at R2 as 20 after exchanging the packets R1 can detect the remote discriminator value of R2 is 20 and R2 can detect remote discriminator value of R1 is 10 there are different types of BFD modes let's start with the first mode we have here is asynchronous mode BFD asynchronous mode means that network devices periodically send BFD packets to each other if a network device doesn't receive BFD packets from the other end for a specified time this specified time called detection period the network device sets the BFD session to down state that means R1 and R2 with asynchronous mode exchange BFD packets with each other any device of them 
is not able to receive the BFD packets for a specified time, this time is called the detection interval or the detection period, the device can declare that the other side is down and it sets its BFD session into down state. Before we go for the BFD second mode, we have to know something called BFD echo function. With BFD echo function, the network device sends a BFD packet and the remote system loops back the packet received along the forwarding channel. R2 doesn't generate a BFD packet to R1. Echo function can be used when the remote end network device cannot support BFD. It supports only basic forwarding network layer functions. Now we can discuss the demand mode. We can use the echo function when the demand mode is configured. The network device sends multiple BFD packets if the device doesn't receive BFD packets sent by itself for a specified time, it sets the BFD session to down state. When the network device can announce that the BFD session with the other peer as in the down state, this is the detection time or the detection interval for BFD. Each network device has BFD parameters called detection multiplier, minimum TX interval, minimum RX interval, and those parameters affect the detection time. Each network device has to be configured for the BFD session with detection multiplier minimum TX interval and minimum RX interval. The detection time for the BFD session calculation depends whether BFD in asynchronous or demand mode. If BFD is in asynchronous mode, the BFD detection period equals remote detection multiplier multiplied by the maximum intervals of local minimum Rx and received minimum Tx. In the example here, the detection period or BFD detection time at R1 would be the detect multiplier of R2, which is 3, and maximum between local minimum Rx and remote minimum Tx, remote minimum Tx, which is minimum Tx at R2. So the maximum here is 200 multiplied by 3, the detection time here at R1 equals 600 millisecond. For the demand mode, detection period of BFD will be local detection multiplier multiplied by minimum echo RX interval, which will be 400 millisecond. Default values of BFD parameters are minimum TX is 1000 millisecond, minimum RX is 1000 millisecond, and local detection multiplier is 3. We have to mention that to reduce the usage of system resources when detecting that the BFD session is down, the system locally on the router adjusts the interval between receiving BFD packets to a random value from 1000 to 3000 in millisecond. 
if we are configuring the local minimum rx interval to be 100 millisecond for example this value will be adjusted to a random value from 1000 to 3000 in millisecond this is to reduce the headache and usage of system resources after the pfd session becomes up the configured interval is restored back to 100 millisecond if it's configured as 100 millisecond what is the best practice here if bfd is applied to other protocols if it's bounded for example to ospf or bgb or any other protocol setting a large bfd detection multiplier causes bfd to detect a link in a long period if a fault is detected on the link traffic can be switched to a standby link only after the detection period expires so that takes long time to switch the traffic to the standby link in this period packets may be dropped before switching to the standby link bfd is still waiting the detection period to expire so it cannot notify any other protocols that there is a failure and in this time packets is dropped so we have to be careful when we configure the bfd parameters and to set it to a good reasonable values especially for the detect multiplier and the minimum tx and minimum rx intervals it's better to set same values between routers here we have detect multiplier minimum tx minimum rx intervals are same between routers r1 and r2 routers can have the same detection period if there is any failures occurred between them bfd control packet consists of a multiple of mandatory and optional fields like sta which is the status of the local bfd device it's sent in the bfd packet the detect multiplier which is the detection multiplier flag used to calculate the detection timeout interval as we said previously my discriminator which is the local discriminator it's a non-zero value generated by the local device and used to locally distinguish multiple bfd sessions your discriminator which is the remote discriminator value received by the remote device if this value is unknown or not received yet its field is set to zero desired minimum tx interval which is the minimum interval for sending bfd packets on the local device minimum tx locally required minimum rx interval which is the minimum interval for receiving bfd packets on the local device minimum rx required minimum echo rx interval the minimum interval for receiving echo packets on the local device if the echo function is not supported by the local device this field is set to zero bfd can be bound to everything bfd can be for default ip can be for static routes ospf ospf version 3 can be for isis for bgb and bgb4 plus bfd can be for ldb lsp bfd can be for ldb tunnel bfd can be for bgb tunnel for rsvb for tecr lsp for te tunnel it can be for pim protocol it can be for pwa3 for vbls it can be for vrrp can be for e trunk for link bundle or ether trunk it can be for segment routing mpls and segment routing version 6 its name sbfd bfd it can notify all these protocols that there is a failure quickly in the scope of our section we are going to practice bfd for ldb 
and later on next section we are going to practice BFD for traffic engineering tunnels.